Uh, welcome to this uh, presentation of Android Auto. I will try to make you today a live coding on how to make an Android Auto app. I'm David Fournier. I work at uh, Smart and Soft. It's a mobile agency, and I know that sometimes it's difficult for uh, making apps accept your uh, project manager or, or your product owner that you want to add new functionalities to your app. So. Today, I will try to make you see that you can add an Android auto functionalities within your app in, uh, let's say, roughly 20 minutes. So first, what you need to know is that Android Studio is giving for free a template for Android Auto that you can start with at the beginning of, uh, of your app. It will add the basic functionalities that you need so you can start an Android Auto app. But you can also extend the, an already made app to just add new functionalities that can handle Android Auto interface in a car. So today we will do this. What you need to do is extending this media browser service that you will uh, uh, put in your manifest. So it's a service that, you, that extends this media browser service. And say with this XML that you will handle the media on Android Auto. There are basically two uh, flags that you can put here. Media means that your app is able to process uh, music within the Android Auto interface in a car. And notification, that, that means that it can handle some messaging in your Android Auto interface. So here, we make an uh, Android Auto app for media means that we will try to uh, display some music in the car. So the point is, actually, your Android Auto interface uh, in your car is, of course, an Android, but doesn't have any APK. The APK is running on your phone. You plug the phone on your Android Auto interface in your car, and then it can interact with these Android Auto functionalities and display some useful content to your users in the cars. So first, we override the onCreate method and use this session. The media session is something that already exists in the Android SDK, and it's just something that enables the interaction with um, your app and the Android Auto interface in the car. You just give the token, which is the session token, and set the callbacks that that will be useful to handle all the controls the user will use wi within the Android Auto interface. Here is the flag that we use to say that you can handle the buttons that will appear in your Android Auto interface. And um, of course, don't forget to release your session in the onDestroy method, or you will have a memory leak. And at first, you will get that from the Android uh, template, Android Auto template, and you just have to create a route to your uh, interface. So what is a route? Is where the Android Auto navigation, the tree view of your music, for instance, in the Android Auto interface will start. So here, we just start at root. And now, just with this, we can already start a already functioning Android Auto interface in your car. Of course, there won't be a lot of things to see for now, but let's try it out. So the point is, we have on Google, fortunately, uh, since Android Auto 2.0, we have an Android Auto emulator that you can run in your phone to try out what it would, it would like, look like sorry, on your, in your car. You are not forced to buy a car to test Android Auto. That's great. So let's just open Bitbox, which is our Android Auto app. And let's see that there is nothing to see, actually, in the tree view. So now we just add some MP3 in our app. So let's add like one cool, awesome MP3, which re we retrieve from our raw uh, folder. So what this method does, actually, we Already, we again use some, um, some interfaces that are already existing in the Android SDK. It's the Media Metadata Retriever, which is an object that 
parses a MP3 or a wave uh, file and gets the metadata of this file and, and then just put them in a media metadata. The media metadata is a small object that can handle all these keys. So here we just add some keys like the media ID, which is how you will uh, handle the callbacks that you will receive from your transport, uh, from your control button in your interfaces. And let's see all the metadata that you can retrieve. As you can see, you can add the title, the album, the art, which is all the, um, the, um, the images that are embedded in your MP3, the artist, the author, etc. So let's put the title here that we retrieve from our MP3 that we have in our, our folder. Of course, we don't change the get root, but we will implement now the second main method of the Android Auto service, which is the media browser service, by adding some items at the current uh, state of your tree view. So here, the current state of your tree view at the beginning is the root. So let's just add if the parent media ID that, are, that is given here, and which is actually what we put in the media metadata here, if the media, me, me, sorry, if the media ID is root, then we add this item we, that we have retrieved from our metadata. So here, you wonder why we don't give a media, met, media metadata. The media item is how we handle the different items in the tree view that can be passed and used in the Android Auto interface. And you can see that there are actually two flags possible, that are the flag which are playable and the flag that are browsable. So the tree view, of course, that can be um, understood as folders. So if you want to open a folder, you will flag your item as browsable. And if you want it to be played, then you will flag it at playable. OK, so now we have added at the root view of our app this small MP3. Now we'll just check the media session callback that we have registered in our onCreate method. These, uh, these callbacks uh, help the Android developer handle all the controls that are placed within uh, the, the Android Auto interface. So the first one is something just to play the music something really easy and really, I mean, don't do this at home. Of course, it's just to show you how to use it minimally. But of course, in a real, in a real uh, interface and a real app, you will need to handle all the tree views of your phone, uh, the phone of your user, like his data within his phone, within his SD card, and handle, of course, in a better way the player. But right now, it just works, so it's OK. And first, we override the onplay from media ID. Every time the user will click a playable item, as I show, uh, as I showed, sorry, uh, in the tree view, uh, this callback will be called. So what does it do? It gives you the media ID that he, that has been passed in the media item data. We just set a playback state on the session. So as I told you, the, se the media session is the object that handles the interface between your app on your phone and the Android Auto interface in the car. So we just set some actions here. What are the actions? These are all the buttons that will be use, used and displayed on the Android Auto interface at this particular state. So you have the play, pause button, the play, the fast forward, pause, everything you would expect from a music app. So let's just put the play, pause button that handle, of course, as you could imagine, the play callback and the post callback. And as it's something that is in our raw folder, we don't have to search on the internet to get the MP3. So we, we can just say that it's playing. Because as soon as we just start the thing, it will play the music. So with only this, we can get um, an Android Auto uh, app playing some music. As I just said, of course, you can uh, browse some MP3s on your phone, on your raw folder or in the SD card, but you can also retrieve some uh, data from the internet and you can put some state like buffering, for instance. 
Okay, so let's check out on the Beatbox interface. Of course, every time I launch the app, you will get the activity. So the activity is just saying, please connect your phone to an Android Auto device. But you can do more in your activity and even handle a real media player. So, sorry. So now in our app in Beatbox, we can check on the route and we have like one MP3. And if we launch it, yeah, you have just been recorded. I know it's a bit old, but it's OK. So now I just click the pause button, and I enter this call back here on pause. And what I just do, do compared to the player, to the on-play callback, is saying that the, play, the playback state is paused. So actually, the button has changed by just saying this playback state here. OK, so now we have one song at the root of our file of our Treeview, but now we want to add an album, actually, in, in our, in our Treeview. So what can we do now? We just add some album that I've created uh, like quite, <laughs> quite easily in a, some array of string that will just map to all the MP3s that are here in the row folder. So I have a guitar song, an accordion song, etc. And what we can do here is just continuing to implement these, this onload children um, method. So first, I still have, of course, my song at the root. But now I can add also a browsable folder at the root of my app. So this browsable folder is just creating a new media item giving a media ID. So you can see that you can have a builder of media description that you can pass to your media item and say, OK, the media ID will be music instruments. What does it mean? It means that every time the user will click this folder, we will enter again the onload children uh, method. But the parent media ID, of course, will have changed to music instruments. And then we can handle new stuff within this particular state of your tree view. So you set this media ID. And you say, of course, that it's browsable. So the Android Auto interface interprets it as a folder. After adding this thing, we just say that, OK, if we are at the particular media ID music instruments, then we add all the media items that we have put actually here by, by just putting them in line in the results. I didn't say that, but in the onload children, it gives you as parameter a result of list of media items. And it's the thing that you, will, uh, that you will send at the end of this, method, of this method so it can display the right thing at this particular state of your tree view. You can also say that your results will be available later, and you can send some callback in this result so it can browse item, items on the internet. Now that we have added these items in an album, then we have to handle some skip next and previous uh, music. So how do we do this? By just, um, by just implementing these two methods, on skip to next and on skip to previous. What it does is just changing the, it just changes the metadata that we use in the current stream here. Nothing so fancy. But do not forget, of course, when you say on skip to next, that in your playback state, if you are not in the music, means that you are in the second uh, in music instruments so in your album you will add skip controls to your actions of your of your um, of your interface so these actions are skip to next and skip to previous so now when we launch this app we can yeah so it's installing and Finally, what we can check. So every time you install the app, you will see this. It doesn't work anymore. But don't worry, it works normally. If there is no demo effect, of course. So let's open the beatbox. And you can check that we have now a browsable that is written here, a browsable folder. And you have all this stuff that appeared. And now. You have some music that you can skip. Okay, so 
what we have done here is making like a small app of Android Auto that can handle songs, that can handle the different media, um, the different, uh, yeah, different views in your tree view. What you have to know actually is that Android is preventing you creating your own layout, your own interface within an Android Auto app. Why do they do this? Because they don't want the driver to be distracted. So they just created some um, use cases that you can implement. So these two use cases for now are the media case, like to, for playing radios so or Spotify, for instance, is doing this. Uh, and the other use case is notification. I, I won't show it today, but the notification thing is to handle some messaging, put the notification, read it out loud, and and handle some uh, answers of this notification. One last thing that I wanted to show you is the, media the other media session uh, flag, that is transport controls. The transport controls tells the Android Auto interface in the car that it can handle also voice queries. And it comes for free within this media service. The only, need, the only thing you need to do is adding voice control handling in your app, within your callbacks. So on Play From Search, actually, will give you the query, which is the, the phrase, the sentence that had said the user. So you can uh, handle it in some ways and put it, put it the, the, right, the, right, uh, uh, the right song, the right theme, the right uh, genre of music. But now what we just have done is saying, OK, just launch the on play and play the first song that you have got. So now that I have added this, I will retry one last time for normally. As, we, as I had no demo effect, and it's just right now that it will happen, I will try to talk to my phone. And hopefully he will answer. <laughs> That's not for sure, actually. But what you can see is that within 20 minutes, you can really create something that add the, the Android Auto functionality to your app. Contrary, for instance, to the Android Wear, where you, have to need, you need to uh, add a module to your app or something like this. Here is just implementing this service, giving this flag, and, and that's all, basically. So now I will try, try to talk to my phone. Play music on Beatbox. Je ne peux pas répondre à la demande. Yeah, I will retry one last time. Play music on beatbox. Je ne peux pas répondre à la okay. demande. So that's okay, but we, you need a really great English accent so the phone understands it. Um, okay, so basically, it's what I wanted to show you about adding the Android Auto functionalities to your app. Thank you. So, of course, all the code that I've done today is check it, check, uh, yeah, you can check it out on GitHub right now and get all the code and just try to, to make your project manager happy by adding a new functionality in your customer app. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Thank you. Thank you.